Hey, this is Rob Weedoff, and I played John Marston in the Red Dead Redemption series. You're watching In Conversation with Amber the Fangirl. Hi, guys. Amber here with my giant tower of axolotls. Welcome back to In Conversation with ATF. My guest today is a voice actor, an actor, um, a man, a man from a video game. He's a fictional man. He's a... Uh, what what's what, what's his what's his occupation? Uh, uh what's Dustin's occupation? <laughs> uh, well, he was a he was a rock farmer for one. <laughs> I was gonna say I was about to say cowboy, but I'm not. Is is I okay? I'm gonna put it out there now. Oh, he is he is a cowboy. I've never played Red Dead Redemption, but I have looked into the game. So yeah, like I don't have like a platform to play it on. I mean, we have it. We have it. Like it was my brother's copy. But it's on Xbox 360, and that do they don't play on my old, my new Xbox. So right, yeah. yeah. Well, I know it's. Uh, I I think they. I don't know if they ever tried to make it compatible with other consoles or not. But yeah, it's kind of uh, it's kind of outdated at this point, isn't it? Yeah. Well, you know, you came back for the seat, goes so my guest, everybody. Okay, let's let's rephrase that again. Okay, my guest is a voice actor, an actor, a cowboy. He is the voice and motion capture, performance capture guy of John Marston in Red Dead Redemption and its sequel, Red Dead Redemption Two. He has also appeared in oh yeah, and another DLC, Undead Nightmare as well. Um, he's appeared in Codename Cygnus as Lazarus, which is an interactive radio drama. He's also been in films such as Sixteen Blocks, The Outside, Double Tap, and also Red Dead Redemption: The Man from Blackwater. He has also won the Interactive Achievement Awards little award thingy for outstanding character performance in Red Dead Redemption. My guest is John Weirthoff. Hey, hey, what's Hello. happening? Hello. Oh my gosh. He is joining me live from his chicken coop. That's right. That's right. And uh, uh, I've, I've got to tell you, you might hear chickens. They're not in this room with me, but they're just on the other side of this wall. So You actually have chickens? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we have oh. five <laughs> So, yeah. so wait, do they live? So do they live in that, or do they live in like a different chicken coop? They live in a different chicken coop. So before we got these five chickens, like five years ago, maybe uh, we had we had thirteen chickens at one time. And this, wow. where I'm sitting right now, when we had those thirteen chickens, they did live in here, and so. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why I call it a chicken coop because that's what it was. <laughs> and uh, we realized 13 chickens is probably too many and we got really overwhelmed with them. So we we got rid of all of them and um, thought, yeah, we, we really enjoyed having chickens, but that's probably not our thing. Well, my wife really, really missed them after a while. So we, we got five more and five is plenty. For a family of four, I guess, people that want to eat eggs. We have plenty yeah. of eggs, five chickens. So, uh, but yeah, so in that time between getting rid of our original 13 chickens and getting the five that we have now, mm -hmm. I created this room in here with all this really cool fan art and all this stuff that I, 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 I love having it and I want to show it off. So I've got my own little space here and I call it a chicken coop because that's that's actually what it is what it was yeah wow so do you use the space to record or is it to hang out or is it both um yeah i mean i guess the sound in here probably isn't the greatest for recording but um so i don't i don't use this this space to record but i do hang out in here if i ever do instagram live or a lot of posts that I make or cameos or whatever. If I'm doing something to uh, post, I guess it's it's probably done in here. It's just kind of a space where I I know that I can go here and be the only one in here. If I try to do anything inside our house, then my kids will come and uh, you know attack me, or my wife will have something that she wants to ask me or something. So I take myself away from all that and uh, I come up to the chicken coop. It's like the safe house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like the only place where you can be like sane and just like not surrounded by chickens, <laughs> even though right. it's 
be in the name. You're just surrounded by pictures of yourself. Your alternate, your alternate, what's it like? Alternate ego? Alternative ego? Yeah, maybe. I mean, I don't know. I hope. In some ways, I do think it would be, um, I guess, a. Alter a ego. That's to, what it is. To uh, feel like I could be partially like John Marston. But um, also, in a lot of ways, it would be, uh, I guess, probably. Not a compliment, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, Rob, uh, I just wanted to say, so apologies. I'm literally just putting on lip balm because, like, it's that time of the year where, like, it's cold and my lips get so sore. So, do excuse we'll me. definitely take care of that. My goodness. Oh, yeah, it's the worst thing. Chap lips are just like uh, I've had them for years, and it's just like the worst pain imaginable. Like it is. It burns. Yeah. It's, it, it's bad. Well, good. I know. Well, yeah yeah of course and um when i also say that time of the year i mean i also mean well for those of you who live in the northwest of england and have easy access to liverpool then rob is actually going to be appearing next month at comic-con liverpool along with his red dead redemption friends that's Rod to clark alex mckenna and benjamin byron davis so tell me more rob <laughs> oh goodness well i can't wait for one, it's going to be a great, great time, as it always is, to hang out with anybody that I can hang out with that I worked on Red Dead Redemption 1 or 2 or what any part of that whole series. Really cool people, really fun. For, I mean, actual friends of mine, not just co-workers, not just someone that I worked on some project with. We're actually um, on a chain. There, I think there are 16 people or something from the game that interact almost on a daily basis on this text wow. chain. And yeah, so to be able to go enjoy spending time with them in person, I love mm -hmm. it every time. And then also all of us really, really enjoy meeting people that are fans of the game and, and interacting with people that enjoyed the, the uh, projects that we were fortunate enough to be part of. Right. So um, yeah. Yeah. It's really, really a, a cool experience every time. And I know that all four of us are really excited to get over there and meet everyone and hang out and really enjoy it. So, yeah, thanks for bringing that up. You're welcome, because you just did Edinburgh last year um, at the Royal Highland Centre. Um, and I went to that. That was very fun. That was really fun. It's so fun. So <laughs> fun. And I, I want to tell you... Um, so the Q&A panels, you know, we do those Q&A panels and people ask questions and we try to, you know, interact with the crowd and whatever. I I have never been in any kind of panel where there was a crowd that big as there was. Oh, my. Oh, my goodness. It felt it was it was wild. I don't know how many people were in that crowd, but it was amazing and it was so exciting and so nerve-wracking and all everything combined it was really awesome <laughs> i'll tell you what the the seat in arena like i think the red dead redemption panel at liverpool is in like the biggest arena there and trust me i've been in that before for panels and it's big like this is like the staging bit and then the seats go all the way up here and it, trust me it's big and i know in a at edinburgh i can't which stage did you do it on did you do it at the one where all the guests were or did you do it on like the other side of the i don't know it was a big big open space and uh no it wasn't no not where all the guests were no it was in a different oh, room right yeah yeah there yeah 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 but trust me yeah. like i know the seat in there there wasn't a lot of seating to be fair to be fair um but then the liverpool one loads of seats trust me it's gonna be a full house so when you walk out on that stage you just walk to the audience you're just like oh my god it literally is just tons of people tons trust me like there will be people coming from up and down the country who couldn't make it to edinburgh to come and see you for i'm not kidding oh wow well thank you and uh yeah anybody who does decide to come we're, we're really looking forward to it that part for me will be nerve wracking but i'll enjoy it and it'll be great so uh thank you in advance and also please excuse my um nerves in advance that's okay that's okay actually i've got to ask 
when you were at Edinburgh, did you do any sightseeing? And do you have any sightseeing plans in Liverpool? Because, of course, the Beatles, you know, Beatles Story, you know, Cavern Club, you know. So what were your plans for outside of a Liverpool Comic Con? Um, well, so I'm not there for, for a whole lot of extra time other than the two days of the convention. I fly in Friday morning and um, I don't know exactly what time I get there, but I, th I think that I land at 6 a.m. or something crazy, right? Wow. Which is great because then I've got the entire day to go sightseeing. I just hope that I'm awake for it. You know, <laughs> with the time difference and the, I don't, I think it's like 14 hours of traveling or something like that. So um, I know that w when I've been in this kind of a situation before, it's um, such a, a cool experience that you just, your adrenaline is so high that you just go and you enjoy everything that you do and see. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Of course, we're all interested in learning more about the Beatles where they're, you know, their hometown and, and seeing some of the places where they hung out or whatever that looks like. But I, um, I guess I've been a little bit nervous to ask a whole lot of questions about the Beatles when when we're all going to liverpool because i'm afraid that people in liverpool are like there's so much more to offer here it's not just the beatles it, you know and so i am excited about that but i i don't know i don't know what we'll get into i'm sure there's so much to see and so much to do hopefully we'll get to get a big chunk of it oh yeah there. Definitely. I mean, you've got not just like Beatles stuff, but then you've got like the live building. You've got Liverpool One, a massive shopping complex. And you've got, you know, like all sorts of different things, like shops, I suppose. I mean, <laughs> like people, people only associate Liverpool with like the Beatles and stuff. Like, I suppose like, yeah, it's like because you've got the Beatles story and then you got all the, you got the Albert Dock. Yeah, um, you got that as well. So um, it will be fun. Trust me, you'll have a really good time sightseeing it's fun i've done it before i can personally recommend it well th well thank you and i'm sure we'll enjoy it every second of it wonderful well so let's really get into what people well people are probably screaming at the screen why have we talked about the main topic yet it's red dead we want we've missed liverpool liverpool and stuff okay okay but that's just in case you're in the air you want to go and meet rob um so rob uh red dead redemption so, how did you get the role of John Marston, may I ask? Oh, my goodness. Um, well, I, I think it just was, it must have just been kind of meant to be. I don't, I don't know, honestly. I mean, so the story, here's the story. I was driving home. I think I was driving home from work on a regular weekday night whatever um but it was like 6 p.m and i'm just i'm going home from work i got a call from my agent i assume they were going to tell me you have an audition tomorrow because they usually give you a day in advance or whatever for a commercial or or whatever it is you know that i've this was my commercial agent that called me so um they asked me if i was able to make it to a last minute audition for they said it's it's for untitled video game project that was the information that they had and i said it so is that maybe like a is it maybe a, a commercial or something to promote a video game that's already been made and they said maybe we really don't know but can you make it and i i remember thinking like in that moment how do i get out of this because i was i had to drive all the way across town i had two dogs that i needed to walk before i you know left again for a couple hours to go all the way to this audition whatever and i and i remember thinking like no this is really really inconvenient and i don't know what it's for and I'm, i don't but honestly i i couldn't come up with a good reason to say no in time so i said yeah i'll be there <laughs> because i couldn't think quick enough to have an excuse of why i shouldn't be there. I'm not kidding you. I, that was my initial reaction to you have this audition. Can you make it? Anyway, I, I went there and um, the audition, the casting office was wild. It was full of people. 
everybody seemed like they were all being frantic. You know, it was just, it was a whole lot going on in this little place than normally was. Cause I had been to this place several times before, never seen it like this. Um, one of the things that was weird is that the majority of the men that were there auditioning, I assumed for the same project, were all wearing camo, like they were army guys. And I thought, nobody nobody told me to wear camo. Oh, my goodness. Oh, man. So anyway, I finally get um, up to the place where I sign in and and talk to the person to get my they call them sides right it's your it's your dialogue you gotta if you're gonna say anything in the commercial or video game in this case they have you try to memorize some lines and then you go into the room and go in front of a camera and you perform these lines that they give you so this sheet of paper was i mean full of dialogue like i don't I don't think I had ever seen that much dialogue for a commercial audition. It just, I, again, I'm still thinking this is a commercial for something, right? Um, yeah. But anyway, they said, yeah, just memorize this as best you can. I know it's a lot, but do your best. Try and memorize it and be off book. Have it memorized by the time you come into the room. And we're going quick. So really look at it. Try and learn it. So I, I'm sitting there thinking, I don't. This is really crazy. You know, so I'm reading all these lines and try to memorize them. None of them were lines that were actually in Red Dead at any point. Um, there were there were lines talking about um, this character that I was auditioning for was talking to this woman and saying, you know, I really, really love your apple pie. And I always have. And I'd love to stay and hang out for longer, but I got to get out of town. And you know that I have to get out of town, whatever, whatever it was, but it was something along those lines. Um, so I'm, it's my turn to go in the room and I think, all right, well, hopefully I got it memorized. When I get in the room, there's a table, <laughs> there's a table and a bunch of clothes. Like somebody was doing their laundry, kind of just a big pile of clothes. And they said, all right, so, when you say those lines, do you have it memorized? And I was like, I, I hope, I, I think so, maybe, I don't know. But I'm, the whole time I'm really thinking like, no, there's no way, there's too many. So they said, while you're saying those lines, just speak directly to the camera and you're going to fold these clothes. And you don't have to fold them like perfect, but, you know, just they want you to be busy while you're saying your lines. And I thought, <laughs> I barely... I can't remember these lines anyway. There's so many of them. Now you're asking me to fold clothes. Well, so I I get started, and I don't know how well I folded the clothes. I can't say that I folded the clothes very nicely at all. But I actually do think that I said all of the words. I said it all, I think. I had memorized it and was able to spit it out. So I get to the end of it, and the, and the guy running the camera says, all right, cut. Okay, so... That was really good. Uh, you memorized it, I think, but that's that's not what they're looking for. So here's what they want. I'm going to give you another chance at it. Here's what they want you to do. And so he told me all these different notes. You know, this is the character instead of what I was trying to do, whatever. They said, I'm going to go out of the room just to do something real quick. Think about what I said. And uh, when I come back, we'll we'll do another take. So the guy's gone for like five minutes. And now... By the time he comes back, I'm really, really feeling comfortable. Like, I'm going to do it this way. This is what I'm – I'm going to get this. I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to do it. Um, so he finally comes back in. But when he comes back in, he's got another actor with him. And he looks over and sees me, and he's like, oh, huh! kind of like, oh, my goodness. Like, he completely forgot that I was even in the room. And so he looks at me and says, hey, I uh, I really, really appreciate it. And I'm so sorry. We've got to keep moving. So what you did, what you did was great. And we've got to keep moving on. So thank you very much. And uh, have a good evening, whatever. And so I left there thinking, I can't believe this. I drove all the way over here for something. I don't even know what it is. I've gone through this crazy audition process. And now I have to leave because it's too busy for me to stay and make the corrections you just told me I need to make. 
What a waste of time. <laughs> and so a couple weeks went by and my agent called me and said, hey, you remember that audition that you had for that untitled video game project? And I said, yeah, <laughs> kind of like, why are you even bringing that up? She said, well, you booked it. And I said, oh, no, well, my goodness, what is it? And she said, we still don't know. <laughs> so I went, uh, we had we had a couple days of rehearsal before we started shooting uh, Red Dead. And when I got there my first day, the very first thing we did was sit down, all the actors that were there, and uh, there were some producers there and our director, of course, and they handed me my non-disclosure agreement. And as soon as I signed that saying that I wouldn't, I wouldn't ever say a word about what it is that I'm doing and all the rules associated with that. Then they told me, this is what we're doing. And, uh, and they said, by the way, you are going to be the playable character. And I said, Oh, cool. But I really didn't know what they were ta talking about because I wasn't much of a gamer. <laughs> so this whole thing, I'm telling that's what I'm saying. It was just meant to be. I have no business. I had no business playing the role of John Marston for a thousand reasons. I'm so happy that they chose me and I'm and I'm really, really fortunate because of it. But I'm just telling you, I don't I don't know how I actually got the role, but it I guess it, it worked out. It was just hot luck. Yeah. I mean, any one of those things that that I mentioned could have, could have changed things for me very, very drastically, but I'm so happy. I know, I know how fortunate I am to have even been involved in any way with any of this red dead or rockstar game stuff. And, uh, so I'm so glad that I, I didn't come up with a reason to not go. <laughs> oh. so glad. Yeah, I was gonna say because like, how did you how did you recover from that? How like you literally recovered by literally booking the role? Like you thought you'd like completely flung it, and then they're like, "Oh yeah, you got it." I'm like, that must have been like, you must have like not understood. You must have thought like, have they got the wrong person or something? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it did feel so much like that. It was just so much, so much confusion, and and maybe that's just the way these things go. I don't know. I mean, there. The, there are other jobs that I've booked in the past where I've I've left the audition thinking that was a waste of time. That was terrible. And then I get a call that I booked it. And I think, well, the times that I, that I leave an audition thinking, I feel really good about that. I never hear anything back. I don't, it's just so hard to know what, you know, did you do it right? Did you not? Um, most of the time when I feel like I didn't do it right, that's when I book it. So it's hard to explain. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, because, like, you know, like, have you ever done any other voice acting roles aside from Red Dead? No. No, I haven't. Well, I guess you mentioned the uh, code name Cygnus, right? Yeah. Um, that was, that was um, a very, very different thing, though. I mean, I for that, all I did was sit in a sound booth and read off of paper. Like I didn't, I didn't have any of the lines given to me before I showed up that day. And then when I did, I'd read over what it was they wanted me to say a few times. And then mm -hmm. they'd say, all right, you think you're ready? And I'd say, yeah. And we'd do three or four takes until it was right. And then that was it. So with, with Red Dead, it's a whole, whole different ball game. And, um, yeah, but no, that's it. I mean, that's that's really it as far as I don't I don't know what it would be like to like to do anime or um cartoons where you don't actually do performance capture. I think yeah. it would be much I think it would be so much harder. Yeah, definitely. Wow. Would you would you like to do more voice roles? Of course. Yeah, I love I love the work. And I I kind of, you know, like so when you're doing performance capture, you're actually saying the words as you're moving around on the stage with the other actors, right? We all have those crazy motion capture suits on and uh, we're acting out the majority of what you see when you're playing Red Dead Redemption, any part of the series. Um, and I, I, 
I guess that that makes it. I assume that it's easier to do that because you actually you react to others, other actors, right? And they're doing it right yeah. then and there. If you're just in a sound booth doing a cartoon or something, I don't I don't even know how that works. But I assume that you see the cartoon and then you try to say the words to kind of match the the movements of what you're seeing. I, I I've never done that. I don't know. I think that that would be way way harder though than what we did for for red dead because you've only got yourself really right i mean like you've done you've done some voice acting yourself you know yeah what that's like um i really don't i mean i don't i know what voice acting i guess i did in red dead the series when they had me go in the sound booth to do lines like if you're traveling on horseback right and there's yeah. a conversation like you're all riding horses together or whatever we would do that in a sound booth because there was no reason to do it performance capture the the game engine makes all that stuff look right but yeah uh yeah as far as as like a cartoon or i don't i don't even know i, I mean any kind of animated project that's not performance capture i i would love to do it i absolutely would love to do it but i do think that it would be more challenging in a lot of ways than what we did performance that when we did it performance capture yeah yeah that's yeah you've got a, got a good point there you that was really interesting take though on uh like voice over like cartoons and stuff like that <laughs> well thanks i like it you're welcome oh okay here's a good one um, and I've just completely forgotten what I was going to ask you. <laughs> oh, no. oh dear. Um, oh dear. Uh, <laughs> oh, what am I like? Um, oh, this is this is going to take me a while to remember now. I literally had it. It was at the front of my head, and then I was like, "Oh wait, there's another question I'd like to ask." But I'm going to save that for Liverpool. I'm going to ask all of you at the panel because it's a question oh. that I think would be better directed at all four of you guys. Yeah. Well, please remember. That'd be great if you do it there. But um, yeah, maybe I talk too long sometimes. I no, think it's okay. Just... It's okay. I just have a bad memory. <laughs> um, okay. oh, 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 I just remembered it. I just remembered it. I've just remembered it. Okay. If you didn't get the role of John Marston, what do you think you'd be doing now? Would you still be doing voice acting? Was John Marston your first ever voice acting role? Yeah. Aside from was. commercials and stuff. Wow. Yeah. I had I had some luck with doing commercials, um, and I did a couple radio ads, which I guess is voice acting. I guess I guess it is. I mean, it's yeah acting, and it's, it's only a form your, of voiceover. Um, yeah, but um, yeah, I, did, I I guess that there were a couple, like you mentioned, some movies that I was able to to work on, um, but I didn't I didn't have any role that I played that lasted for more than a day or two ever until I started working on Red Dead. And then of course that takes years to, to make those games, you know? So um, yeah, I did. I had some luck. I mean, my resume, I saw, I guess I saw it recently because I was going through old pictures and whatever and found a piece of paper that had the list of commercials that I had done and the movies that I, that I had worked on the, um, the majority of the work that I've done that, I mean, by a long shot though, is, is Red Dead. And if I hadn't booked Red Dead, I have no idea. I have no idea where I would be right now because I know that I really, really enjoyed living in LA. I was a bartender. <laughs> so it was, it was good. I had income, right. You know, I, yeah. I, Made decent money and I was able to support myself. I didn't have a wife or any kids when I was doing that. But um, the thing about being an actor is you can have success after success after success. But unless you are getting paid, you know, a substantial amount of money, like you see movie stars getting paid, you uh, always you always have to have a second job. You have to have because the there's no consistencies 
there's no guarantee you're ever going to get another job, right? When you're an actor, there's just, yeah. it's not like you can just say, I'm going to, I'm going to go work on this today. And they're going to say, yeah, come in, play this role. That's not how it works. So um, I, I was so fortunate that I was able to understand what it's like to be a working actor, have consistent work on the same project for an extended amount of time when I when I booked Red Dead, that's what I experienced. And then when we finished Red Dead Redemption, mm-hmm. my my then girlfriend, who's now my wife, and mm-hmm. I were having some pretty serious conversations about, you know, w- whether we were going to spend the rest of our lives together, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, yeah. I didn't feel comfortable starting a life with someone and both of us wanted to have kids. Mm -hmm. So starting a family with someone and, and not really having consistent income, (laughs) just didn't feel comfortable with that at all. So I guess knowing that, um, you know, after red dead redemption was over, I knew what that was like. I was fortunate enough to experience that. And I would of course love to continue to do that forever. I mean, I really, really enjoyed it. I've never had a job that I've enjoyed more, but there is no guarantee that it's ever, ever going to happen again. So yeah, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to, to do something that was a little bit more, uh, I guess, consistent. Right. So we ended up moving to Indiana and yeah. starting a family and I've done, Jobs that I enjoy. I mean, it's not, I'm not doing my dream job by any stretch of the imagination. I've already done my dream job. Maybe someday I'll get the chance to do it again. Um, But what I do is consistent and that works for my family. So that's kind of where I am right now. Wow. So is there a chance of a Red Dead 3 in the future? Any chance? I I mean, I, I would love, I would love it if there is, and I don't, I don't know. I mean, I honestly don't know any more than you do or anyone else does. I mean, I guess Rockstar probably has a better idea than either of us know, but um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. And I won't know if, if there was something, I wouldn't know about it until right before it starts. At least, at least that was my experience with Red Dead Redemption 2. I didn't know that there was ever um, any kind of a possibility of doing more work with Rockstar at all until they called me. And then it was if maybe it was six months later, I was there working on it. So um, I don't know. There there could very well be a Red Dead 3 that has nothing to do with John Marston. That could be very, very likely. I don't know. I mean, again, your guess is as good as mine, but. If there is one, if there is a Red Dead 3, of course I'm excited about it, whether I'm part of it or not. I think that everyone probably probably would be, just based off the success of the series so far. I think it's um, it's kind of proven itself as being something that people enjoy. Yeah, definitely. And I tell you what, I tell you what, in Liverpool, it's going to be a bit of a rock star reunion because uh, Stephen Ogg is going, who is Trevor Phillips in GTA 5. Um, have you ever met any of the GTA guys, considering, well, both games, you know, GTA and Red Dead were made by Rockstar? Have you ever met any of these guys? <laughs> yeah, I met, I met Stephen Ogg, actually, briefly. Um, that was in, I want to say that was in Telford. It was, I was in England. When I met Stephen Ogg. You went, you did, you, did, you did Will's Comic Con. Yes. Yeah, oh, we did. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I didn't know you, I didn't know you did uh, Will's Comic Con. That's one I, I usually go to. That's where I met, Um, you know, I met Troy Baker there. That's where, that's where Kay uh, was uh, the assistant to Jeffrey Pierce. So, um, yeah. that's where I met her. Yeah. Wow. That's so cool. I, that's actually where I met Troy the first time as well. Yeah, I met really? Troy and Steve probably five minutes apart from each other. And um, I've not seen Stephen Ogg since. I, I guess it sounds like I'm going to again, which is awesome. Yeah, um, I'm excited to see him. I, he's, uh, oh, let me just try and see if I can move my camera a little bit. He's up there. Very top. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
Great, great guy. I mean, again, it was brief. We said hello, and oh yeah, right, yeah. We both we all know the same people, and 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 that was about it. But um, I met, and now I can't remember his name. But GTA Five, there were three playable characters, right? There was Stephen yeah. Hogg, yeah, and then um, what I met one of the other two guys, and I can't remember his name. I'm so sorry, Ned Luke. It was Ned Luke. That's exactly right. Michael met- Santa, and he got Sean Fontaine, who was Franklin. Ned Luke, yeah. yeah. He actually worked, he worked on Red Dead too. Believe it or not. Did he? Yeah, yeah. He didn't say anything. His character. He never had a character that actually said anything out loud because they didn't want anybody to know that it was Ned Luke. But he played um, for I don't know three or four different times when I was in there working. He would be in there wow. playing non-playable characters and, oh, and so cool. just there you know so wow that it was is... really cool though yeah he was a great guy that and is so cool yeah 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 um but that's i guess that's it from the gta games i haven't met i don't think there are people that live in new york that go in and play npcs for rockstar games on a regular basis so there are probably you know people can be like yeah i was i was several characters in gta 5 and several characters in red dead 2 you know that they just keep bringing them back because they know that they're professional people and they they understand what's going on and um but they may never have ever had a line in any of the games but they're they're definitely in them <laughs> Hmm, maybe well oh, yeah. i've met several of those people yeah. i think it'd be really cool if you did like a, like a dlc crossover with gta i think that would be very unique um, um yeah say when i'd be happy to do it yeah definitely <laughs> oh my gosh like i'm just picturing it now in my head and i'm just like oh my gosh someone just make, like just mod it and make it reality or something like that <laughs> that would be a lot of fun it absolutely Definitely, will. for sure. Uh, my final question to you, Rob, is uh, about the character of John Marston. Do you believe you have any like things in common with him? Do you think like you act like him, or do you know what? What do you think that? What do you think sort of connects you to John Marston apart from you are the voice and the motion capture behind the character? Um. Well, yeah. I mean, I guess the. Uh... The short answer is I hope that there's not a whole whole lot that I have in common with John. We spoke about this earlier, but uh, um, but I do think you know this is this is something that I that I certainly feel about John, which is um, when he finally recognizes what his purpose is or what he feels like his purpose is in life, which is to be a good father and a good husband, and get away from the life he was living and once he made that decision and that commitment there was nothing there was literally nothing that would stop him from fulfilling that and uh i like to think that you know because to me my purpose now is to to be a good father and a good husband and uh I hope that I'm doing all that I can to to be that person. So looking at John, I think we can all agree there's no doubt that he is determined and passionate about it. And hopefully I am too. Otherwise, I, I don't know that I hope that I'm like John that much, really, in real life. He's to be put very seriously. So it's just, you know, it just gets you there, you know. Um, who played your son in um, Red Dead, may I ask? Uh, several people, actually. Uh, oh. So, yeah, in um, in Red Dead Redemption, in the first one, mm-hmm. oh my goodness, now I can't remember his name. Anyway, oh, anybody... J- Josh Blaylock. Up, yes, Josh. Such a cool person. So when we worked on that, he was 18 years old. And so he was just old enough to be able to come on set without a parent or some kind of a guardian. Because if you're a minor, you have to have someone there with you to ensure that you're being treated correctly and whatever. Almost like 
not yeah. a babysitter, but someone who can can speak for you if you're in a p- position where you're uncomfortable, but don't have the tools maybe to express, I'm not, I don't want this, whatever the case yeah. may be. Um, but so Josh was 18 and he was from the beginning, he was always there, you know, by himself. Uh, and I was always fascinated by the fact that he lived in L.A. by himself. As an 18 year old, he, he was from like Alabama or something, wow. but he was an actor and uh, he, he got himself out there. I thought, man, I, I wish that I had half the guts that you've got. And he, there he was working on Red Dead Redemption, playing the role of Jack Marston. It was awesome. And he's got such a great resume. Um, I don't know if he's still actively pursuing an acting career. Because now he's married and has kids. And Is so, he? Wow. Yeah. Oh, my yeah, gosh. All grown, up. all grown up. He's a dad. He's got beautiful kids and a beautiful wife. And he's really a cool, cool person. So um, so in Red Dead, he was the only one who played Jack. But in Red Dead 2, because Jack was so little at the beginning of that game, yeah. and because young kids grow so fast, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, we had uh, like I think three or four different Jacks, so kids that were in different stages of Jack until yeah, finally um, Teddy Bridgewater he played Jack, the oldest ver- version of Jack. I guess, excuse me, in Red Dead Two. Yeah, wow, it's, it's so cool. Like you must have had like a sort of connection to work with these character, uh, not character actors. Then. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it was great. It was, uh, it was so much, it was so much fun. And uh, of course, you know, these kids were wearing the performance capture suit too, right? So instead of doing scenes with Ben Davis, who's six, six, I don't know, he's a really, really tall, big, strong dude, right? Big. Um, And, and uh, Roger Clark also big, big, you know, and, and, and crazy, Peter Blumquist playing Micah, you know, and and all these grown adults running around trying to be tough, whatever. And then I've got, you know, scenes with these little bitty kids, you know, just little tiny guys that at some points I'm picking them up and running with them. And it was so cool. And uh, I think one of the things that made that really special for me, too, and, and why I enjoyed it so much is that when we started Red Dead 2, my wife and I have twin boys, right? So yeah. our boys were two years old when I started going to New York to do Red Dead Redemption 2. They were seven by the time I was done. But um, I was working with these these kids that were, you know, the same age as my kids at home. And so it was it was just cool. And I, I can remember thinking like, oh, my goodness, you you are doing a great job. If either one of our boys we're sitting here trying to get this scene done. We'd never do it because they're too crazy. <laughs> I presume you're going to let them play the game when they're a little bit older. Then. Yeah, I mean, if they want, if they want to, I'm not going to. You know, we don't really talk about. I guess because we're we're a fam- like we're an actual family. We don't really yeah. talk about that kind of stuff um, together. But yeah, we. Uh, I mean, if they want to someday, sure. Maybe, maybe that's. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Rob, thank you so much for joining me on my little podcast show. Well, thank you so much for having me. I've really enjoyed it. You're welcome. Where can we find you on the internet? Oh my. Uh so I have Instagram, mm-hmm. uh Rob underscore Weedoff. And then I have actually that's my username for everything. I have TikTok. Um same username. Twitter, same username. Um, and I think that's, oh, YouTube. I have a YouTube page. Oh. Same username. It's all Rob underscore Weedoff. If you want to check out any of that stuff, that's where it is. Sweet. <laughs> I'll get that all linked in the description. And with that, we have had live from the Chicken Cube, Rob Weedhoff. Um, And if you want to meet him in person, don't forget he's come to Comic Con Liverpool next month, I believe, on the. First and second of April at the Exhibition Centre Liverpool. Uh, they have still have tickets available, so if you want to go get your ticket to go see Rob, 
now is the time to do so. So with thank that, you. you're welcome. You're welcome, Rob. With that, thank you so much for watching this episode of In Conversation with ATF. Stay safe, stay happy, be kind to others and yourself. Please like, comment, and subscribe, share with your Red Dead Redemption fan friends, and we'll see you soon. Take care, everybody. Bye. Um, cut.